Hey, so if you couldn't tell, it's Christina, and today I'm going to help teach you or even just help you rejog your memory of how to make a Lewis dot structure. First, I don't know about you, but it's kind of helpful to know how many bonds there are going to be, so I'm going to tell you how to calculate that. First, you're going to need the total number of valence electrons. Luckily for my class and I, we have Mr. Miller and he made this pretty cool periodic table of elements. And at the top, it says how many valence electrons there are per element, which is actually very, very easy for us. Thanks, Mr. Miller. So, once you find out how many valence electrons there are, you're going to divide that number by two, and therefore you will get your number of pairs. Once you get the number of pairs, you're going to subtract that by the number of unshared pairs in your molecules, and by that, you are going to get the total bonds for your Lewis dot structure. First, I'm going to help you figure out C3H8, aka propane. If you look at your periodic table, you'll see that carbon has four valence electrons and hydrogen only has one. C3H8 has a total of 20 valence electrons. Divide that by two and you get 10. Subtract that by zero, which is the number of unshared pairs, and you're going to have a total of 10 bonds by the end of this structure. Now you're going to link the carbons together. You link the carbons instead of the hydrogens because the carbons already had bonds ready to satisfy on each side. Now it's time to bring out all the hydrogens, all eight of them. As you can see, there are eight unsatisfied bonds at the end of each carbon, which is perfect because there's already eight hydrogens waiting to be bonded with. As seen here, you're going to take some of the hydrogen and link it to the unsatisfied bonds to the carbons. This way, both the hydrogens and the carbons both get satisfied. Now you're going to finish this off by linking the unsatisfied hydrogens to the unsatisfied carbons. By doing this, all the bonds are satisfied and you have the 10 bonds as needed. Here's the final step. You are going to replace all of the single bonds with a dash. It'll be like this for all kinds of bonds. Say if it was a double bond, there would be two dashes, triple bond, three dashes, and so forth. Now I'm going to teach you about polyatomic ions. With polyatomic ions, electrons are either gained or lost. The polyatomic ion I will be teaching you about is phosphate. There is one phosphorus, which has five valence electrons, and there are also four oxygens, which each have six valence electrons. As you can see, there are 27 valence electrons. If you divide this by two, you aren't going to get a whole number, and you can't get half bonds. This will be addressed later. First, you are going to start with phosphorus, which has five valence electrons. You are going to take one of the oxygen and link it to the phosphorus through one single bond. Now you're going to completely satisfy the phosphorus by adding two of the oxygen molecules to the phosphorus. However, there's a problem with this. All of the oxygen are still unsatisfied, and there's still one that hasn't even been connected to the phosphorus yet. First, you'll have to open up a space in the phosphorus, and you'll do this by transferring one of the top phosphorus molecules to another oxygen that is already linked. For our sake, we are going to move it to the bottom, so that way it will link with the bottom oxygen. However, the phosphorus ha still has to be linked to itself, so we are going to have to move that bond up on our structure. That's better. That's how it should look when you bring it up. Because one oxygen is linked to one phosphorus by a double bond. You will have to draw that differently, but I'll show you that later. Thank you, oxygen on the bottom, for taking one of the bonds. Now we can bring in your other oxygen friend. There we go. Now all the oxygens are linked to the phosphorus. However, we're not done yet. Seems great, right? No. The oxygens are still unsatisfied, but we don't have any more phosphorus to give it. So, we are going to have to introduce other electrons. There are always electrons out in the atmosphere, and we'll have to bring them in to satisfy the oxygens. There we go. Now we have everything satisfied. Because we added electrons to our Lewis dot structure, we need to place them as an X onto our structure to tell others that we did add from the atmosphere. As you can see, under the P, there are two dashes instead of one like the rest of the bonds. This is due to the double bond, and the two dashes signify one bond each, so you would need two. And now to finish, you're going to add brackets around our Lewis dot structure because we added electrons. Next, you're going to signify that we added three electrons by putting a minus three outside of the bracket. 
This signifies that three electrons were lost from the atmosphere. Well, that's all folks. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something from this.